Just first off, um, just kind of give a general description of, of what it's currently like working in an emergency room ER during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, right now, it's been a very busy time. Um, we are seeing uh, less people who would um, visit the emergency department for things that they could see their primary care for. Um, and we're seeing sicker patients right now. Um, we've been seeing a lot of patients who are coming in with um, initially shortness of breath, and then they will develop into worsening shortness of breath, and unfortunately, they'll be uh, intubated in some cases. So sometimes um, a lot of the patients are, we're seeing a less amount of patients, but the patients who are coming in are very sick. So how are you preparing for work? It's not as if you're just walking into the EAR and saying, hey, I'm ready for my shift. What are the preparations you're taking prior to working in the emergency room? So one of the Boston hospitals, uh, the one that I'm working in right now, um, they have been changing guidelines weekly based off of the CDC's recommendations. Before we would walk in, make sure our hands were clean, put a mask on, and then just go into work. Now they've been changing up guidelines, including that every morning we need to um, do a self audit uh, through an app on our phone, including um, if we're having any symptoms. So the symptoms will be asking us, um, the that the app will be asking us if we're having symptoms of cough, fevers, any upper respiratory illness. Um, if we do check off any of that, we need to go to our occupational health services and we won't be able to work that day. Um, if we do um, have clearance for work, a message will pop up on our phone saying clearance for work. Now, in particular, in the hospital that I'm working at, the lobby used to be filled with chairs, filled with visitors. That's completely changed now. The Lobby is completely empty of any chairs. Visitors, unfortunately, are no longer allowed. Um, and those chairs have been replaced with security guards who are checking our IDs, as well as that we have clearance on our phones, um, as well as tables set up with hand sanitizer and uh, volunteers handing out masks. So as soon as we get to the hospital, we have to hand sanitize, put a mask on, and there's actually people patrolling the halls making sure that every employee at the hospital has a mask on. And that's everyone from doctors, nurses, all the way to uh, cafeteria workers, maintenance staff, any person at the hospital, as long as you're walking in the corridors past the lobby has to have a mask on. So that's the, that's the biggest change now. And then um, coming home is so another change too, because before I would just clean up and then come home. But now I've been changing my scrubs, changing into a new clean, clean pair of scrubs, driving home. As soon as I get home, I'll leave the sunroom door unlocked. I'll strip down everything and then um, go right to the shower after that, just because I don't want to bring anything in the house with me anymore. Okay. Um, what precautions are you taking at work? Are you masks, things of that nature? Mm -hmm. So, the policy is mask for everyone. That was the initial policy a few weeks ago. Now, as things change and we're learning more about this virus, we've stepped up our protocols. So we're wearing a mask for every patient. Before it was wear a mask for any patient who you think may have COVID-19. Um, now it's wear a mask and wear eye protection for any patient with COVID-19. In addition to that, wearing a gown and wearing gloves too. Um, the difficult thing about this is the symptoms right now are so vague that we've been seeing a variety of symptoms that are associated with COVID-19. For example, previously we would think fever, cough, upper respiratory illness would test for COVID-19. A few weeks ago though, one of my coworkers had a patient with abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, and that was it. Sounds more like a gastroenteritis. Um, they, just out of clinical suspicion, decided to test for the virus and they came back positive. So it, it's a very odd presentation. Before people were saying it's sneezing, coughing, fevers. Now it's anything from diarrhea, nausea, upper respiratory illness. So a lot of, a lot of vague symptoms. So now to get back to your question, um, we've essentially been treating every patient as a, as a COVID-19 patient. Um, if, if they're not there for an obvious 
ankle fracture or a knee fracture, we're wearing gowns, gloves, caps, um, the, the boot shoe coverings for, for essentially everyone now. And um, in terms of the N95 respirators, they hospital policy made a change that anyone who's doing an aerosolation procedure, that being if a patient's getting a nebulizer that they need emergently, or if they're getting intubated, that's when the N95 masks are being used. They're actually trying to steer us away from having the patient use a nebulizer treatment and more so having them use a inhaler, which would provide less scattering of the particles throughout the emergency department. And then anytime we do have to use an aerosolized procedure, including a nebulizer, um, that's in a negative pressure room where they're isolated. That way it prevents any particles from being spread throughout. Okay, cool. Um, I was going to, and one of the questions I had was, you know, it's, it's allergy season. It's still kind of the tail end of cold and flu season. Um, what are some possible signs of this, of, of COVID-19, so people aren't tying up ERs and possibly exposing themselves to it when they don't have it, when it's just allergies or a cold or, or a flu? So that's a very tough question to answer because I'm, I'm sure if you've seen on the news that some people are asymptomatic and that's why they're stressing people to not go out and that's why social distancing and isolating is the most important thing right now. Um, people can have a variety of symptoms from absolutely no symptoms to your typical upper respiratory illness, that being fevers, chills, coughing, um, we've been seeing sore throats and then difficulty breathing or a heaviness in their chest. Most recently, we've been seeing GI symptoms on board with this too, including nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain. So it's definitely a, a mix of symptoms in terms of what to do um, and, and how to test for them. Um, a lot of, um, a lot of the ways, it's, it's difficult right now to, sh to tell exactly how allergies and this and the common cold, how, how they're not, um, you can't really compare them right now because you don't really know. Um, so the biggest thing is if you have a history of seasonal allergies, if you say, oh yeah, I usually get a little stuffy around this time of year, a little congested, I, I develop a little bit of a cough. Um, if that's typical for you, ride it out for a little bit. Of course, if things do worsen, that being if you develop a fever, um, temperature of 100.4 or greater, definitely um, should contact your primary care provider first. And your primary care provider can then uh, direct you as to where to go from there, whether it's um, recommending that you go to the emergency department based off of the severity of your symptoms, or if you go to one of the COVID-19 testing sites um, throughout the state. Actually, that was giving you my next question. Uh, what should people do if they think they have it? Mm -hmm. So if people think they have COVID-19 or that they've been exposed to COVID-19, they need to, first of all, take a look at the severity of their symptoms. If they're having a low-grade fever, a mild cough, if they can breathe well, then they should call their primary care provider. If they're having difficulty breathing, then they should definitely talk to their primary care provider. And if they can't be reached immediately, they should go to the nearest emergency department. The people who are most in danger for this or, or most susceptible for this are the people who have underlying lung pulmonary condition, conditions, that being asthma, COPD, people who are chronic smokers or, or used to be chronic smokers. Those people are very susceptible to this illness. And those are the people that we're seeing come into the emergency department who are very, very sick and very ill. Okay. I want to just jump back for a minute. Um, What's it like dealing with suspected cases of COVID-19? You know, you're dealing with this on a consistent basis. What's, what's it like for you in a, I don't know, personally is the right way to say it, but like, what's it like deal dealing with it or the steps you're taking? It definitely makes you more cautious before when, regardless of where I was working, I'd have a patient come in with an upper res respiratory illness and I may or may not have put a mask on years ago. Now with this illness, I'm treating everyone as if they have the most severe case of COVID-19 and that includes masks, face shields, gowns, gloves, anything to uh, prevent contracting or bringing home this, this virus. Um, 
So it's, it's definitely made me more cautious and made me think more as to, okay, what else is on the differential other than COVID-19 for this patient? If I have a patient coming in with chest heaviness, sorry, my, if I have a patient coming in with uh, chest heaviness, am I saying, okay, are they having chest heaviness because they're an asthmatic and they're having difficulty breathing from COVID-19? Or are they having chest heaviness because they're actually having a heart attack? So even though we're still dealing with patients who are coming in with other conditions, we still also have to um, consider COVID-19 for any patient. Okay. Um, last question I had is how can, how can people help or, you know, and support, you know, those that are like you that are currently on the front lines right now? Yep. So the biggest thing right now is um, staying home. I don't know if you're aware, but over the next one to two weeks, they're saying that this is going to be the peak in Massachusetts. Um, it's an imperative that everyone stays home because a lot of people are um, a lot of people are not endorsing any symptoms, and then they'll they may test positive, they may be carriers of this illness. There's a lot that we still don't know about this virus, and um, unfortunately, because we don't know a lot, the best thing that we can do is stay home. So. The best thing that people can do in some cases is absolutely nothing, as, as awful as that sounds. The, the best thing to do is do nothing, stay home, only go out if you need to go out. That being, don't go to the supermarket and decide to um, go shopping there for a couple hours. Go in, get what you need, and that's it. Um, the other thing would be um, in terms of the respirators, they've been changing guidelines throughout. So the CDC, as well as the Massachusetts governor uh, recommended that everyone, I, I believe uh, Marty Walsh of Boston recommends that everyone wear a mask. Um, that's to both protect you from contracting the virus as well as others from getting the virus if you have it. So if you cough into a mask, you'd still have a little bit of a barrier um, that can prevent the spread to someone else. So the biggest things would be to stay home, self-isolate. If you have, if you have to work um, and you work in a group setting, if you're feeling ill, do not go into work. Um, and then um, the other thing is just um, make sure that you uh, support us because the best thing, um, pro probably the most frustrating thing is seeing people out in these large groups, um, especially like when you're driving home from work. You work a 12 hour shift in the emergency department, you've heard about multiple patients getting intubated, everyone's alone because families aren't allowed to be in the emergency department. These people are essentially being sick alone and then you drive through Faneuil Hall and you see groups of people and it's actually, it's actually quite insulting towards all of us who are um, out there dealing with this every day, dealing with sick people. So the best thing would be to stay home and that, that's, that's my big take home. Stay home, let, let this ride itself out. Um, the longer people don't social distance and self-isolate, the, the longer this may progress and I don't know about you, but I'd, I'd like to have a, a summer at some point. Uh, so the biggest thing would be stay home. Um, if you do have any masks or respirators, um, depends on which hospitals, but some hospitals on their web websites, they do have ways that you can donate to the hospital. Um, I know of a few Boston hospitals that they're getting just random donations of boxes just left on pretty much their front step, and they don't really know where these came from or what they've been through. So the biggest thing would be to, um, if, you, if anyone does want to help, would be to either contact um, their local hospital or their regional hospital and see what they can do to help out, whether if they want to donate food, if they want to donate a mail, if they want to donate any materials, gloves, masks, um, face shields, and then, um, and then just reach out to any hospital. I know of a lot of people, um, I've seen on the media who are um, using their 3D printers for to make face shields, and, and that's awesome. Um, if people do have 3D printers and are able to do this, then I'd definitely um, recommend it. Um, the other thing that I'd like to just say before uh, this is over is um, make sure you're listening to the right sources. A lot of people are having saying things without any backup, whether if they're just solely listening to the media, if they're solely listening to someone who's not even related to healthcare, in healthcare, knows anything about healthcare, people are saying, oh, spreading rumors. Rumors can cause a lot of fear, and fear can make people very anxious. And unfortunately, we've also been seeing an increase in, of anxiety, both 
within our healthcare workers as well as patients too. Patients are coming in saying, I'm not having any symptoms, but I'm afraid that I might get symptoms, so I'm here to get tested, which is ironic because they're actually in a place where we're seeing a lot of positive tests come back. So the biggest thing would be make sure if you do tune into the news and do listen to media, just make sure you're listening to um, credible sources and um, because credible sources are, are the most helpful thing right now. Any particular credible sources you recommend or? Um, I would specifically say listening to the CDC's recommendations. They're the ones who are pretty much driving the boat on this one. Um, as much as I don't want to say it, um, politicians, they don't have much of a medical background. Um, so you can, they, and they, most of them are vectors for the people in the background who are in the health facility. So try to stick to the people who are in charge of infectious disease control, that being Dr. Fauci. Um, try to listen to government, government, uh, Governor Baker's recommendations. Um, try to listen to any local uh, health organization recommendations. But um, the biggest thing would be just don't listen to people who are not involved in this, who are spreading rumors saying, oh, I heard that this was a conspiracy and this and that. Um, for the people who think that this is not a real, cons that this is not real, um, it is. I see it every day. I've been exposed to it at least 20 times in the past week um, with positive cases, and I wouldn't like to catch it. And for the people who um, do think that this is still a joke and rumors, um, I'd invite you all to stand outside a hospital and see how many ambulances they have out there because it's it's uh, it's, it's quite it's quite impressive. And to see the gear that um, first responders are wearing just to go into a, any house call is uh, is impressive. So for anyone who thinks that this is still a joke, a rumor, um, a conspiracy, um, you should probably get some good sources. Just wanted to say thanks to everyone who supports all of us. Um, I know Social Hospital, they had a, a large um, parade of uh, emergency response personnel. Uh, a lot of the hospitals, um, a lot of the local restaurants are donating lunches, foods to um, foods to the workers. So we'd definitely like to just thank everyone for their support. Um, biggest thing, help us out by staying inside.